Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are doing a Tonic Studios tutorial featuring the memory book, Treasure Dreams, I believe it is. Yeah, Treasure Dreams Base Creator Die Set. This was graciously given to me by Tonic Studios, so they are sponsoring today's video. Thank you very much, Tonic, for uh, entrusting me with your products. I will show them off to the best of my ability. I have had a lot of fun. This is my very, very first memory book, and I am um, excited to share it with you. I have not completed it. I have designed it all the way through. Um, we are making not the largest one because I wasn't quite sure if I had enough paper to complete one, but we're going to make the next to the largest, and we're making it... Um, to commemorate my 30th wedding anniversary. Randy, my husband, and I are going on a Mediterranean cruise this May, and the colors that Tonic sent me were blues and corals, and it just made me think of the Mediterranean seas. So I can't wait to get started, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. So... Without further ado, let's play. Okay, so like I said, this is the die set. And this set has a whopping 54 dies in it. Yes, that is not a mistake. 54 dies. These right here are your book. Whoops your actual book dies. They come with, the, you know, the area for your spine. So this would be your largest page. Um, and that, you know, I did not even think to get a measurer, but that would be about a seven inch book. If you um, did the full size, we are going for this size book today. And that is... A little about, about five inches is approximately the size there. Each of these sizes, there's three separate sizes here, has a stitched layer that can go inside it for your first layer to decorate. Um, and then everything has a layer to go with it. So um, this here is for doing multiple flips. So like for instance, and we're gonna use this one. This page would go this way. This page would go this way. So we are gonna do that on one of our pages. So that's pretty fun. And then of course you have your layer die. You have lots of individual label dies. You have these awesome circle nesting sets which have stitches and scallops and piercings. These would be great on individual card sets, you know, for future projects as well. They have different banners and different sentiments. These sentiments are cutouts, whereas these all deboss. And you have ones that say like adventure, my journey, a little book of, happy memories. This one says started here and this one has a stitch and a deboss. This one says um, -ta -ta -ta. special times. This one says us. This one says me. This one says memories. This one says family. Um, here are two different spines. You can do a triangle spine or you could do a circle spine and that, that would allow you to put your actual holes in there if you wanted to do, let's see here, if you wanted to do a ring binding or um, uh, here's one that shows a stitched binding. So you've got those options here in the set. Um, I have opted to use this additional set here, which makes an actual spine for your booklet. Um, this is a separate purchase. It's actual the keepsake book maker spine simple spines die set And I'm going to show you how to use that 
You also have this large die set here and these three pieces, um, which I'm not gonna use, is makes this pop up here in the center, which is really, really cool to do, like if you're doing a family oriented and you want like your generation. And the only reason I did not use this in the book is because the pictures were so tiny and I was scared for my crews that I wouldn't have little tiny pictures that little. And I wanted more room for pockets for like tickets and memorabilia and then areas where I could die cut out like a picture from like a normal, you know, four by six picture that I could die cut out using, you know, some of these dies. So that's the reason I opted not to use that in this sample. Um, but I think that's the only thing I didn't use. I have really used this die set. So, um, so let's go ahead and get started. And just so, just in case people wonder, I am using the magnetic easel mat that I bought. Um, and I can link it below as well. I had talked about this on one of my unboxing videos. Let me just show it here. This is a Tonic Studio. Let me flip it around. I'm using it flat. This has saved my life on making this. This sits up. I know it's hard to see here. But this sits up like an easel on my desk. And all of the 54 dies hooks to this magnetic sheet or this easel here on my desk. I did not lose a die in the making of this memory book. So... I have to get a hu give a huge kudos to Tonic Studios in this magnetic board. So if you guys lose your dies, this, if you buy anything else, this should be your next purchase. This thing is awesome. So this is a, definitely something I will be using over and over again in my craft room. And I love that even, it hooks even with the packaging. So I, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So without further ado, I'm going to move these dies off my table and we are going to get started. And let's make the base of our book. Look, I got a little cuteness already on my desk. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use your simple spine or like I said, you could do the other, using the other spine which we will do on another piece of the book. And I do have to warn you, this is going to be a long video. If I notice the video is extremely long, I might make this a part one and a part two. Um, I'll just see how long it takes to record. But when you use this die, just run it through with a thick piece of card. You do want to use for the spine. Um, Tonic actually recommends 300 GSM. I believe this is a 110 pound cardstock um, that I'm using here. When you die cut it, you're going to get, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, I think you can. You see these little notches that on here that it does? Wherever those notches are, you are going to score. These, these have score lines in them that the die puts there. And then you're going to have notches. Your notches are your mountain folds. So you're going to mountain fold in between each of these notches. The two notches, the, the fold, the score line in between them are mountain folds. So mountain fold all of those and of course alternate the other ones. And then you're going to glue those two where that, those two that have the little dashes you're going to glue those two together to where it forms a spine like that. And that's what you're wanting. You're wanting four of those. Four of those little spines like so across. Now, when you use your, I'm going to pull it out here. When you use your base creator die, you're going to cut two of these out of your thick card and there's no cutting line here 
there's only a cutting line all the way around here. So you're going to cut this and then you're going to measure here and that is about two and three fourths I've got from this notch that the die makes out to here. And this piece here, after you have done your three, oh, it's three, I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's three spines that it makes, not four. It's three spines that it makes. And this piece is going to measure, and you, you'll trim it to measure this. Because, of course, this is going to make a huge one. You're not going to need as, you know, that large. You're going to want it to match this. So that's going to measure the two or the one and three fourths by just about three inches. And that is how big this section here is that I've left. So because you want this to fit in this space that you are leaving here at the end of this open cut space. So remember, this does not cut this way. You are making this space, this three inches by two in a, or one and a four, one and three fourths, three inches by one and three fourths, like so. So once this comes out of the die, it's not going to have this cut edge unless you butt it up to the edge of the paper. And the edge of the papers here and you don't want that you want excess paper here and then you want to cut that portion okay so you're gonna have two of those and that's gonna be your front cover and your back cover then you're gonna cut and for these I did put it to the edge of the paper I put this die all the way to the edge of the paper and taped it in place so that I would have the straight edge there so I didn't have to worry about cutting it. I went ahead and did that six more times and that's going to give us our pages for our spine. It's going to give us the pages here. So right now I'm going to go ahead and show you how we're going to put the actual front cover and back cover together. It's these two pieces. We're going to attach them here. And actually, I've already got the ribbon on the back cover. We're going to do the front cover together. So, for the front cover, since we're going to put these two together, I don't want the open gap where these two go together. I don't want that on the front so rather than put it this way where that's going to show on the front cover I'm going to put it this way if that makes sense so I'm going to go ahead and glue that now remember this is the first time I'm doing this so if you have any questions at all I am always a message away I never mind questions so if I say something or do something especially when I'm learning myself that you do not understand or that's a little you know I didn't quite understand that Melanie leave me a message or email me at Melanie stamps at yahoo.com I will always respond to you and I will answer your questions and I will work with you until we can resolve the question. So if I fumble on my words or I don't explain it quite right, don't ever hesitate to contact me. Okay, so now we have front cover, back cover. Okay, so now we're going to open this up and we're going to hook our spine in here, which we've pre-measured and cut. And that's probably the trickiest part of this whole book, is getting that part. It's kind of just trial and error. 
a little bit, getting it to measure the, the size that you want it. You know, each book is different and that's the reason the die is so large. It is probably a little easier to just follow the directions in the actual instructions that they give you. They do give you really, really detailed in instructions here on how to put the holes in. And then you just use your binder, you know, clips. But of course, I wanted to be difficult. I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could do it. And Tonic actually did not send me the spine. I actually had the spine in my stash. And when I found it, I was like, heck, if I'm going to learn to do this, I'm going to learn to do this, right? So, so I did it both ways. I did the spine here. And then in one of my little pages, I have a pull-out little book that uses the other. So you're going to get to see the other way, too. I'm going to show both ways. Okay, so now our book has a little spine in here. It's just going to have our pages on it. I'm using very strong liquid adhesive, which you want to use with your... Um, anything that's going to have a lot of use, you know, with a lot of open and closing. You want to use a strong adhesive. And I've been watching a lot of tonic videos, both from the design team. Thank you, Ruth Hamilton. I have been totally stalking hers and Christina Smith's um, YouTube channels. And I think I'm like y'all's favorite fans at the moment. But, um, and, of course, tonics. But, um, I have been watching them a lot and learning a lot from them. So, thank you very much for your inspiration. Now, on this, like I said, did I do too many? Yes, I did do too many of these. I was thinking four, like I said at the beginning of the video, and there's only three. So, I cut too many, but that's okay. I'll use this one as an example instead of worrying about cutting it. When you cut this from the die, you have, whoops, out of camera, sorry about that. You have these little tiny notches here, okay, which you use when you, you do the front of the book, but on the inside, you don't need this big part. You only need this part when you're bending. Um, so you're going to take your paper trimmer and you're going to cut right where that notch is. So the, for these here, for the pages, I have cut that and then I have taken two of these and I have glued them together just around the outside edge, leaving the opening up here. So this is open and everything else is glued. And now I'm gonna put glue on the inside here, go down on the spine like this, and glue these pages in on each spine. So to save time, I might speed this up along. If the video is extremely long, I may speed up sections. So just wanted to let you know. Okay, there we go. So, we have all of our pages in our book. Now we have our front cover to do. I have got our front cover started here. And what I have done is done simple layers with the dies. Coming in with, um, starting with a classic card in navy. A foil card. And then a, uh, a decorative foil with rose gold hearts. This is a decorative die from the die set. And then I have used the main sentiment from the die set. And it is cut with foil and with the specialty blue card that came with the, 
with the paper pack that I was given. I put that on, um, I, I slightly offset it, if you can see there. I slightly offset it just to give it a little extra dimension, which I thought really made it stand out. And I've glued this to vellum. And I just thought it really gave a romantic look to it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just glue little areas here try to hide it a little bit behind this little dots behind the letters just so hopefully maybe where the thicker areas are hopefully it's not going to show too bad um with the vellum these little thicker areas here i don't think it'll be too bad and then we're going to do this on a background of the foil. And I think by having that double layer of offset, um, of offset colors on the front will also help disguise the adhesive too. This is the same size or same. Um, I went ahead and put the, the foil, the peach foil underneath the vellum to just help it um, stand out a little bit more on the front of the card. And I thought that gave it a very pretty, a very pretty look. So I did pop this up on dimensionals on the back and then we will put this on the front of our cover I think that's very pretty okay and then for um, before we attach that I did put some double-sided adhesive there and then I found this old retired ribbon from Stampin' Up that I just thought matched this booklet color scheme so I thought I would use it and I thought I would think ahead and put in a tie here that will eventually close our booklet or bind the booklet closed when all is said and done here. Hopefully. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. And then we will glue this onto our cover. Whoops. And that just ties that ribbon in there and between the double-sided adhesive and the glue it will be secure in there and strong okay for the spine because like I said I've already put a back on it and I put the ribbon in the back too as well so these two will tie at the end but for the spine, I thought I would pull that ribbon in as well. So I wanted to show you what I did here. I just decorated a piece here to coordinate on the spine. And then I took a couple pieces of that ribbon and some double stick adhesive just to put it here to show you what I've done. I took this die, this heart die, or this key die 
from the die set and the die itself is one that folds over and makes this cute little key. So I didn't want to glue it until I showed it to you and showed how it folded over. And so then I ran the ribbon through it. I'm going to go ahead and glue this. I ran the ribbon through it and then I've hung this so it's going to hang on the spine of the book just as a little accent like the key to my heart. little accent which I thought would be cute for the, the spine. And maybe I'll put a little glue dot or something right under there to hold it in place like that. Okay, so spread one, our first spread of our book. I've done each spread in a little baggie. This side is super, super easy, as I've just done a little pocket. Now, This paper right here, I handmade with the uh, Nuvo products. So while I'm letting this piece dry here, I'm going to take a break and show you the clip of making this handmade paper. Okay guys, here we go. We have, um, four different Nouveau products here that I'm going to use and we're going to create our own pattern paper. Um, I think the color trend that I'm using in this booklet um, needed a lighter paper. I have the one with the foil hearts on it but I wanted something without a patru like detailed pattern just something lighter for little accents just to lighten up the solids uh, I'm so used to using pattern paper and I didn't have anything that I just really felt fit the romantic vibe of the book that I was wanting to put in here so I am focusing this book on my anniversary trip that's coming up in May so I'm going with that as my theme and so we are going to play here a little bit and see if we can make this into our own pattern paper. So let's play. Let's play. So we're going to use some, let me use this one first. This one is really, really pale. It's the lightest color. So let's build up in color. This one is a crystal drop in seashell pink. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of it on my tonic glass mat here by Tim Holtz and I'm going to give that a little water and I'm going to spray spread it around here a little bit makes you think you're finger painting do have a little paper towel on the side of me and then I am just going to smush this into my paper oh. <laughs> This is a very, very pale color. I probably shouldn't make this large of a piece at once. So let me 
trim this real quick. Let's do about half of this. Um, at one time, approximately. If not, we might be here all day. All right, let me put a little bit of more of that on here. Smush your paper down in it. It's really pretty. And I can see why it's called shell pink. If it feels like it's too dark in some places, just smush it around a little bit more because you are going to be going darker with the other colors. Okay. Not leaving any of that goodness on the paper. Okay, let's set that aside for a second. Clean up my mess. This is the travel mat, by the way, that I got in my um, my previous unboxing video. And I like it perfect for videos because it's nice and small. Hopefully it's not too reflective for the camera. And I thought it was perfect for techniques, the size of it fitting inside the camera shot. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with this Dream Drop. Now this is more of a metallic called Fruit, this is Fruit Cocktail, and I am in love with this color. It is a metallic, so it's got lots of shine in it. And I really, really, really like it. This has a shimmer, this Glitter Drop, or no, no, this is a Crystal Drop. This has a shimmer to it, but this has the metallic that I really, really like. It really stands out. So this is pretty dry, so I'm not gonna worry about drying this one. Um, look at that. It's a little heavy there, so smoosh it around a little bit more. Kind of do a little bit more around the edges. Be a little strategic with where I'm placing it. There we go. Now, we're gonna go in with a little more drastic color. Nice thing about all these water-based products is they clean up really, really nicely, really easily between color changes. Well, before I spray that, let me dry this real quick. So now we're going to go in with this sparkle spray and it is in pearlized blush. And it is quite a pigmented color.
Okay, so with this piece, it's not sure if it's dry, but we let's just let's just play for a second here because this piece is a lot darker than my original pieces that I played with, and it's because I didn't spray that the mist before. So let's just go in with some of the lighter pink. And let's see how this works. Let's see if this lightens it any. Mm, not really. Now I'm just playing right now. Every time you do something like this, you're going to get a different outcome. And sometimes you might like your second or third or fourth even better than your first and vice versa. And then when you die cut this, you're going to, you know, you might die cut a heart and you might decide you want a peachy heart or you might decide you want a pale heart and you just die cut the portion of the paper that you want to die cut. So that's one of them. Let me go ahead and just, it's a very freeing technique. Look at that, look at that. That lightened it. <laughs> See what I mean? See now when that dries, that's gonna be more of the marbled look I was looking for. Right there, it'll be lighter and it'll be more marbled. Um, the first time, my first go around, this was my first piece that, and it's kind of what I was after. And this might lighten up when it dries and look like this. And then I did a second piece and I added the blue in, which is the other color. Um, and it is a glitter drop. Um, it is Velvet Evening. And I added that in. And I decided I liked this one better just because I have a lot of blue in it already in the project. So I think I like this look better. So I'm going to work towards this one and this one. And those are what I'm going to use on my project. And I'm probably just going to use it for little accent pieces. So let's get on with the rest of the card. Okay, hopefully you have enjoyed that little tutorial of making our pattern paper. And while you were watching that, I sped ahead, the current me, sped ahead and went ahead and glued some pages in rather than you sit and watch me put in and just glue in pattern paper. So I saved the tutorial parts for you guys to just save on your time to respect your time. So for this first layout, I have a pocket and simply just using the multiple layers. This pocket, I used this die, but I just cut half and then added a strip of the uh, foiled hearts across for stability. This little cute little paper clip is a die inside the set and I cut it with foil paper and then I cut it with um, the thick card stock as well and I glued them together just to give a little extra stability but it's just a little decoration. I also cut the memories from white card and then put it on the coral um, mirror card and I thought we would glue that right down here um, just as a little accent just to coordinate take off some of that glue just to coordinate and I, I wanted to have pockets in here mainly for ticket stubs. I want to keep our little ticket stubs of our daily adventures off the cruise, cruise ship. And then I want little areas for photographs. So this little um, deboss thing says started here. So I thought that would be cute for our first little flip album. And this here flips down, and then I used a piece of my created paper there for a journaling page. 
and I debossed it with, see if you can see that. It says adventure. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. It says adventure. I thought that was pretty cool, the debossing of that. So I added that. And then for the extra page I'm going to put in here, I wanted to use this color card, the specialty card. But it's white on the other side, so I went ahead and cut an extra one. So I'm going to glue those two together. This might be a mistake here because I did read that you want to be careful with specialty card and glue because sometimes the glue shows through. And I thought about that just now after doing that. I've been using the Numo, Nuvo Tape Runner or the double-sided adhesive. Um, and actually on some of these, I put this down first around the edges and then I use the glue and it has not shown through. So this is gonna be, so far I don't see it anyways, but um, you know, sometimes it, it'll show through where you your marks of your glue was. So, but I've heard that it's mostly mirror card or satin card that that does mostly with. So, just a FYI. Okay. So, this has a flap like this in there, which I will show you more farther in the booklet. Um, and then this folds in. And then we're going to hook this one here on this tab. And now this binding is going to show... So what I decided to do is get a coordinating marker and I'm not sure this is going to look wonderful, but we're going to try it and see. I think it'll be better than it being completely white. So let's just see how this looks. Just a okay. The alcohol marker. They can hide a multitude of sins. So let's see. Let's go ahead and move up here so I'm in the camera shot. And I'm going to put some glue on this tab. And I'm going to line this up with the booklet and put that in there. This is probably going to be way too much glue. But you see how the spine doesn't look as stark white. Let's see. This glue does take a little time to dry, and I don't want my pages to actually glue together. So that's why I'm trying to be careful. Yeah, the spine actually doesn't look that bad, does it? Huh. And then this is going to glue down into the book. So this side's not going to show. Looking good. Just making sure it's not oozing out too, too much. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and glue this in the book. Now I left these two blue on the inside so I can put photographs here. And what I'll do is I'll take my four by six pictures and I'll get these dies and I'll die cut the 
photographs out and I'll hook the photographs here. And then I'll have my journaling area to write on. And then we'll fold that up and we'll fold that in. And then I'll put my tickets for the day and we'll be off. Now on this next spread, let me get my next baggie. This is just a belly band, but going in the opposite direction. Usually we have belly bands going this way. This is only glued up top here and at the bottom. And I use this full background die to cut that piece. Um, and then I cut and cut. And actually, I cut the strips first. Then I use the die to cut the top and bottom. That's how I did it. Now, for the insides here, I made a little journaling card to go in there using the little crown that comes in the set and then this little flat top die to put in there as a cute little journaling tab. And then here I've made a little flip book using the little spines that you could be using for your um, your book, your memory book itself. So I chose to use the diamond spines. And one thing I didn't think about, and I completely forgot until this very moment, is they have this die. And I may even go back and do this after the video, but you die cut these little triangles and I would probably do it in this coral um, uh, mirror card. And I would cut this die, uh, let's see, I would need eight of them. So I would cut it uh, three times to get nine of them. And then you would glue one, two, three, four, and then on the other side, five, six, seven, eight. And that gives your holes support. And that just gives you more when you're flipping it. It gives you more support there. So I will do that after the video airs and everything just to finish up my booklet, you know. But for now, I can show you what we're going to do here. And I've made these little pockets with these, which will later be pictures. But I just wanted to show you that the little areas for my photographs and stuff are in there. And I can actually put a photo and then use this as the journaling card for the day. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to just take a darning needle and I'm going to use the same ribbon I'm using throughout and you're going to go go up and down and then go back around. Go back up. And actually, I should have left more ribbon here. Let me pull that out real quick. The nice thing about a darning needle is it's got a really big eye. That's why you want it to be a darning needle. I got them at Hobby Lobby. They were like $1.99 for a pack of them. So super cheap. All right, and then you're gonna turn this around. And you're gonna go back the other way. Don't get your tail caught in there. And then once you get back to the other side, just tie yourself a bow. And I'm not going to trim it off right now because I am going to go back and add those little eyelets. But then this is going to go down. And I'm going to go ahead and, because I made this front so dimensional, 
going to go ahead and put the top on the outside. Now on this pocket, I did make the pocket three dimensional with little um, mini dimensionals right in here so that the pocket did have extra room in it for that. But um, once that's in there, then you can just take it out and you can flip through it and have your little photos. Super cute, huh? So that's how easy that spine can be if you want to opt to put the spine here instead of doing what I did here with this spine. You would just put the holes in all of them and it wouldn't be so thick here. Okay, so on to the next one. And of course that won't be so long and the strings won't be so long when it's all trimmed and everything. For this next one, we have another pocket. And this time, I just made a simple open-close pocket. Instead of having a pocket like this, I went ahead and did, like if I was doing a page, I did a smaller one. And I put dreams on the front with a little tiny heart, and that pops out of like the key, the center of the key, which I did hook on with a glue dot, by the way. So it's not moving around anymore. So, and for this dreams, I used the large sentiment from the front of the book. And I cut out just the dreams portion. And then I took my scissors and I just simply cut in here and then cut around the top right in here to, to fussy cut it out. And then what I did was, did the same thing I did on the cover. I, oops, sorry. I took the, um, the blue, the specialty blue, and I put it underneath the foil for that really dimensional look. And then this is one of those layering ovals. That's the one that does the deboss stitching. And I used my um, handmade paper for that. Um, so for here, all we have to do is glue this. Right on here so that the seam is on the back. Something else I did while this is drying is I wanted this paper to look just a little different. It was looking just a little plain in here. So I took my scoreboard and I scored every eighth of an inch on the paper, pattern paper. And look at the detail it gave. I just thought it gave a little extra to the pages on this one and just made this spread look a little different. So I thought that turned out really cute. I tried to make every single page coordinate, but different as well. I wanted everything to coordinate, and I wanted to use just this die set as much as humanly possible. But I also wanted it to be different on every page. So once this is dried, then we're going to glue the back of this. And we will put this, whoops, we will put this right here so that it flips outward, which will make it a little different. So it's going to go this way. Okay, we'll glue this. That will dry clear. You see, then it has a little room for a tiny ticket of some sort or a little photograph right there. I could even add a journaling page here if I wanted to. And I might do that, actually. I might add a journal page there. Um, and this right here says um, 
this this dreams and then this says and special times right there so I thought that was cute dreams and special times so just press that down a little bit right there and then for our last spread isn't it beautiful this one I think this one is the only page that I used something that is not from this collection. It is tonic, but it is not from this collection. I have put double-sided adhesive on this little foil strip here. And this is going to be a side pocket. So I'm just putting this for extra support on here. Okay. And I'm just going to trim this at the top and the bottom so it goes along and fits our circle. And then we're going to hook this one here for a side opening pocket. So to do that, and this is how I've done all the pockets, you're going to just glue around the edge. And I was really careful with the directional paper of the hearts to make sure the hearts were all going up and down you know, right side up instead of like here, you know, so that it wasn't going sideways. Okay, now I have, just like if I had that, this here, had a side pocket here. Just like I can have that there. Could put that anywhere. And then this here, is going to be a little booklet but it has an extra page in it it's bigger than the other one we made earlier and it's also going to have a bow closure um, this sentiment I'll pull it up closer a collection of treasured memories I didn't want to use another I was going to put us there but I've used that earlier and so I wanted something to go here that um, just kind of finished up the book. Like at the beginning of the book, I have started here. And then I have us. And I have our dreams special time and special times. And then I have a collection of treasured memories. And of course, the whole thing is a tro trove of treasured dreams. So the whole book is telling a story all the way through. It's telling a story of Randy and me. And so I wanted something to finish the book. And I didn't, at first I wanted it to be photos because I wanted this to be like a little photo album at the end. But I couldn't find a die that said photos, and I wanted it to be tonic related. I wanted to use a tonic product. Um, so I went digging, and I found Tonic Craft Kit 32, which is a very old craft kit. I think they're in close to 60 right now. Um, but in this craft kit, it is an actual memory book maker. Um, so some, some months they do an occasional memory book. Usually it's a card creator or a 3D project. Um, a lot of times it's card related, but you know, you always have your stamp set. You always have your die set. You always have your Nuvo products. You always have your paper. Sometimes you have surprise tools, stencils, whatever, but you always have your binder and you, you know, you, everything like that. But anyways, this month, it ha you know, so I went digging. I have probably at least 20 craft kits from previous months. So I went digging, looking for memory book, memory books, ones. So I found this one, 
and it didn't have a die that would work for a sentiment, but I found this, these sentiments in a collection of treasured memories worked perfect. So that is what I ended up using to finish my book perfectly. And I just think that is awesome. I used one of the little tags. I used a brad. It's going through these two layers here. I pop that up and that way it's not, you know, it doesn't go all the way through um, into, you know, into the book itself. It's hidden. I'm going to go ahead and put the other ribbon here. So we have that secured. And we'll have that in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and glue this layer. Oops! I did use that blue marker again on the edges just because I had a lot of stark white. I made this purposely out of the white thick paper first because um, I do want this to protect my photos. So I did that purposely. Um, so I was covering up a lot of the white with my card and my white edges were showing just a little bit so I used my magic marker my alcohol marker to cover up my faux pas okay and then to cover this spine I just let it go a little bit there and I'm hoping this is going to look nice in here. Whoops. I keep knocking that Nouveau over. Let's see. I'm just going to put this like this and see if that will glue down there. So I just thought this was, this was cool the way it went from... The whole thing from a trove of treasured dreams started here. And then that says adventure. It says memories. Us. Dreams. And then it's going to say a collection of treasured memories at the end. So we're going to glue this right down here. And that's going to give us one, two, one, two, three, four photos to end the book perfectly. So that will be the whole entire album. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've hung out with me the whole entire time, please head on over to um, the Linked Tonic Studios um, Facebook groups down below. I'm going to link both their UK site, which is the official Tonic Studio Facebook group, which is their larger group. There is also a dedicated US group. Um, so do not miss that out. Let them know I sent you and, um, you know, support them whenever you can. They're an amazing company and I look forward to working more with their products. Take care and happy crafting. Bye.